Christ the hope of glory. Men of prayer are men of authority. Lift your right hand and shout, All my enemies are finished. Open your heart, receive from Him. Christ is calling you. Brother, receive your hope. Christ is calling you. Sister, receive your life. Bridging Christ, the hope of glory. In whom there's life and hope. Hello, welcome again to the Hope of Glory uh, television broadcast. Your life will never be the same because the word of God that we share with you in this program is alive and active and it is sharper than any double-edged sword and it pierces to the dividing asunder of the spirit and the soul, the bone and the marrow. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12. Now, and, um, we are discussing a very important subject and that is the excellent marriage because there are so many marriages today that are facing all kinds of problems and we keep receiving all these requests for prayer uh, people talking about oh my spouse is involved in extramarital affairs or oh, my spouse has walked away he or she doesn't want the marriage anymore all kinds of things and that is why um, we have taken it upon ourselves by the grace of God to really look at some of these aspects. We are hoping that as we give out this information, you will make use of this information to be able to turn things around in your marriages because information is very important. I read something in the book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse number 9. Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 9. The Bible says, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. So if you don't know, then you register for bondage, captivity. So many people are bound, even maritally, simply because they don't know how to handle marriage. Some people think because they have been in marriage for 10 years, 15 years, then they know marriage. We have found out that so many of them don't understand what marriage is all about. That is why this knowledge that uh, we are sharing with you in this broadcast is really, really important because you only get delivered, you only receive freedom when you know something. In John chapter 8, verses 31 to 32, John chapter 8, verses 31 to 32, Jesus spoke to the Jews who had believed in him. He said, if you continue in my teachings, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So you need truth. What is truth? Truth is knowledge. Knowledge of the word of God. Knowledge of the will of God. Knowledge of God. That is truth. And Jesus says, when you continue in his teachings, you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And in case your marriage is bound, I believe that it will be set free. It will be delivered as you receive the knowledge that we are sharing with you in this broadcast and make use of it. And that is also very important. In, in, in James chapter 1 and verse number 22, James chapter 1 and verse number 22, the Bible says, Be doers of the word. Be doers of the word and not hearers only and deceive yourself. So don't just, you know, watch. Don't just listen. Don't just get the information. You need to make use of it. You need to make use of the word of God that we are sharing with you in these broadcasts. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27, just to quote part of it, Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27, Jesus says, if any man hears these words of mine and he puts them into practice, I shall liken him unto a man who built his house on a rock. That is what we are saying, that we should not just hear the word, we must put it into practice. We must apply the word 
in our specific situations. Praise the name of Jesus. So, let's get back to our discussion on the excellent marriage. The excellent marriage. In the previous broadcast, I shared on three foundational pillars of an excellent marriage. What are the three foundational pillars of an excellent marriage? And these are taken from Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 24, where the Bible says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So three pillars there. Number one, the pillar of living. Number two, the pillar of cleaving. And number three, the pillar of becoming one flesh. Praise the name of Jesus. But you see, these pillars must be sponsored by several forces. There are also other things that must be in place for these pillars to be strong. For the pillar of living, cleaving, and becoming one flesh to be really strong and serve the intended purpose, other supporting forces must also be in place. And that is what I want us to look at very briefly in this uh, telecast. Now, hear this. Number one, I want to talk about spirituality. Spirituality. Spirituality is very, very important in marriage. And spirituality here is all about maintaining a sound relationship with God. Maintaining a sound relationship with God. Maintaining a sound relationship with God. You see, if your relationship with God is not sound, your married life is not going to be sound. It never works without maintaining a sound relationship with God. Now, you may wish to be reminded that marriage was authored by God himself. It was God who said, it is not good for a man to be alone. I shall make for him a suitable helper. Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 18. And God took the trouble of causing Adam to fall asleep and he took a rib one of his ribs, and he used it to form a woman. And it was God himself who presented the woman to Adam. So you need to understand this, that marriage is not man's idea. Marriage is God's idea. Marriage is not man's idea. Marriage is rather God's idea. It was God who said marriage should come about. And therefore, if we want to succeed in it, we must run our marriages on God's terms and not our own terms. If we want to succeed in marriage, we must run our marriages on God's terms and not our own terms. And that is vitally key. It is vitally important. And there's no way we can run our marriages God's way if we are not spiritual. Now, spirituality will mean a number of things. Number one, it will mean that if you're not born again, you must surrender your life to Jesus. Surrender your life to Jesus. Be born again. Receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Stay away from sin. Receive Christ. Let him reign in your heart. He died for you. You must live for him. Spirituality will mean that beyond receiving Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you must make him the center of your home. You must maintain in your marriage what I'm calling a vibrant family altar. The practice of praying together with your spouse and your children if God has given you children. In your house, praying together, reading the Bible together, seeking the face of God together, having a day, for example, once in a week to pray and fast as a family together. You see, in so doing, it means that you are maintaining a vibrant spiritual life in your marriage. It also means that you are making Jesus to be the center of your marriage. And that is going to help you quite a lot. Praise the name of Jesus. And so spirituality is very key. Spirituality also means that you must live a holy life. Live a holy life. Stay away from sin. 
First Peter chapter 1 and verse number 16. First Peter chapter 1 and verse number 16. The Bible says, be holy because I, the Lord, am holy. So God is holy. And we that want to excel and succeed in our marriages, we must equally commit ourselves to holiness. And that is very important. We must stay away from sin. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 17 to 18. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 to 18, the Bible says that we must come out from among them. We must come out of sin. We must come out of compromise. We must come out of quarreling. There are some of the married couples that are always fighting. Their marriage is a battleground. It's a battlefield. It's not supposed to be like that. You're supposed to be the best of friends. And you will not stop fighting and quarreling in your marriage if you're not spiritual. It is only when you are spiritual that you stay away from quarreling and fighting and bickering in your marriage. And therefore, I'm encouraging you to commit yourselves to spirituality. Commit yourselves to spirituality. It is very, very important. You see, you must make Christ the center of your marriage. Make Jesus Christ, you see, the pivot of your marriage. Let him drive your marriage. Receive Jesus in your marriage as your Lord and Savior. Let him the master of, be the master of everything that you do. Let him drive the actions of your marriage. Let him dictate the affairs of your marriage. That way you are going to enjoy excellence and prosperity in your families. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, the other thing is what I'm calling the force of responsibility the force of responsibility. You see, marriage has responsibilities or roles attached to it. So, as far as God is concerned, there are specific roles of the husband in the marriage, and then there are specific roles of the wife in the marriage. Many times, there is chaos in a marriage when the husband is not doing what he's supposed to be doing as a husband, and when the woman is not doing what she's supposed to be doing as a woman. Now, you as a married person, do you really understand your specific roles? Do you know as a husband what role you have in that marriage? And do you know as a wife what role you have in that marriage? Because if you don't know your role, then there's going to be chaos in your marriage. It becomes a challenge in marriage if men don't do what they're supposed to do, and if women begin to do what men are supposed to do in marriage, yeah, the moment you do that, then there is a mix-up, there is confusion. And that is why so many marriages today are facing all kinds of problems, all kinds of storms and challenges. It's because those that are involved in the marriage don't really understand their clear roles in that marriage. Praise the name of Jesus. In the interest of time, maybe just to highlight one or two things. What is the role of the man in the home? What is the role of the man in the home? According to the word of God, the Bible says that the man is the head of the woman. He is the head of his wife. He is supposed to provide headship. Now, this aspect of headship is vitally key because just think of the head of a person. Just think of the head. You are watching me now. Look at my head. I have eyes in my head. I have ears in my head. I have a mouth in my head. You see, I have nostrils, you know, in my head. All these things speak something about what the husband is supposed to do as the head of his family. Praise the name of Jesus. For example, the husband must cast the vision. He is a custodian of the vision of his marriage. He should be able to define clearly where the marriage is going. Because if you don't do that, then where are you taking the marriage to? Because as a leader, you are leading your marriage to some other place. And so be able to see beyond where you are to define where you are taking the family to. But also, uh, um, the head has a mouth. Now, the husband must prophesy over the family. He must prophesy. Use your mouth to prophesy, to speak blessings over your wife and children. Speak the blessings of God. Speak good things about your wife. Speak good things about your children, about the destiny that you are able to see ahead of you. 
Praise the name of Jesus. Also use your mouth to pray to the Almighty God. To pray for yourself. To pray for your wife. To pray for your children. To pray for your, your, your spouse. Praise the name of Jesus. To pray for the purposes of God for your life. Praise the name of Jesus. But also in your head uh, ears. Now those ears are very important for you. Number one, use them to listen from God. What is God saying to you as a person? And what is God saying to you about your spouse and about your children, about your destiny? But also, please, you also need to use that ear to listen to your wife. Your wife has got concerns. Your wife has got aspirations. Maybe your wife has got fears. You need to listen to your wife. There is something that your wife is speaking. Many men are not good listeners. And so I'm encouraging men to really listen to their spouses. Praise God. But you also need to listen to your children. Yes, your children are saying something. They have got aspirations, dreams that they want you to assist them achieve. And therefore, you need to listen. Now, we'll continue with this aspect of the force of responsibility as it pertains to marriage after this short break. God bless you. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of you. Welcome back. We were discussing before we went for break the force of responsibility. The fact that husbands must understand their specific responsibilities and roles in marriage. At the same time, women also must understand what their specific roles are. Because when you don't understand what your specific roles are, as a husband you will begin to do things that women are supposed to do and women, you will begin to do things that men are supposed to do. And that brings a lot of confusion. And so I was saying that a husband essentially is there to provide headship, leadership to the wife, leadership to the children, leadership in the family. And that is very important. You see, the aspect of eyes will mean that you must cast your vision. You must be able to see beyond where you are and be able to tell your wife and children that this is where we are going. And as I, heard, as I said, in the head, you also find the mouth. The man must prophesy over his family. He must pray to God, but he must also use his mouth to give counsel to the children. Yes, give counsel, guidance to your wife, guidance to the children. And that is very important. Praise the name of Jesus. How about the ear? I said, you must have a listening ear. Number one, you must listen from God. You need to know the will and the mind of God for your life, your wife, and the children. That is very important. But you must also listen to your wife. Listen to your wife. What is your wife saying? Is she happy? Is she comfortable? Are there concerns? What are her dreams? And so on and so forth. You need to listen. You need to listen. But also listen to your children. In case God has given you children, you need to listen to your children. And again, in the head, you have the nostrils. Now, the nostrils are there really for smell. They are there to smell things, you see. That means you as a man should be able to discern. You see, number one, you need to assess at every point the spiritual condition of your wife, the spiritual condition of your children. That is very important for you. You need to smell danger. If there is any danger coming against your children, maybe in form of peer pressure, in form of um, the negative influence of television upon the children and so on and so forth. Now, these are some of the things you really have to assess and analyze concerning your children, for example, and be able to take remedial actions, remedial measures. That is going to be very important for you. Now, in brief, what is the role of the wife or the woman in marriage? I mean, the role of the woman in marriage is clearly defined in Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 18. And that role is that of a helper. You see, the woman is not there to destroy the marriage, to destroy the man. The woman is there to help improve the performance of the man, 
the success of the man, the prosperity of the man, the distinction of the man. That is very important. You are there as a partner. You are there to partner with your spouse, to partner, to support your husband so he can achieve purpose. That is very, very important. You see, you are a helper, not an interrupter. You are a helper, not a tormentor of your husband. Because there are some women that are tormentors. They bring pain and tears to their husbands. That is not right. You see, your role is that of helping your husband. And that is very important. You must help in the home. You must help in, in, in budgeting. You must help in shopping. You must help in construction projects. For example, if you have such kind of projects, you, you must help in every way possible. And help your husband to make the right decision. And that will mean that your husband should humble himself to be able to listen to you. Because uh, uh, one of the challenges that so many women have is husbands that are not listening. Husbands that can't get advice, can't take advice from their wives. It's a challenge. And yet the woman has been brought about to help the man make those right decisions. To help the man do things right. To help the man go in the right direction. And that is an important role of the woman in marriage. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. So you need to understand that the force of responsibility is very important. Number one, I said be spiritual. And number two, I'm saying you need to understand what your responsibilities are in marriage and be able to undertake them because that is very important for you. Because if you are mixed up, you don't do what you are supposed to do, definitely your marriage is not going to be the kind of marriage that is supposed to be. Praise the name of Jesus. Anyway, we can go on and on and on to talk about this. We are going to stop here for now. We are going to continue with this discussion in the next episode. Praise the name of Jesus. For now, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God is going to give you grace, success, and prosperity in your marriages. Because the principle of spirituality that I talked about is very important. Again, this uh, principle of responsibility that I just you know, started uh, touching on is also vitally key. And please, I want you to continue uh, meditating on this and do your own research around these uh, important uh, details that I've given you on how you can achieve an excellent marriage. Do research around them. And then we'll meet again in the next episode. For now, I want to pray. And I want to start with um, uh, making this particular call. I want to pray with those that are not born again. You are watching me. You are not born again. You are living in sin. You are living your own way. Christ is not in your heart. Look, I'm not here to condemn you. You see, Jesus did not come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So I want to pray with you now if you are not born again. Please follow me in this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. Please forgive me and have mercy upon my life. I now receive Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior, and I shall walk with him all the days of my life. Lord, I give you praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Now, I want to pray for you. Whether you have a marital situation, a financial situation, a career situation, the hand of God is going to manifest in a mighty way upon your life even as I pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I am praying for everyone watching me. I am praying for those that are in need of a miracle. They are in need of a breakthrough. They are in need of a testimony. They are saying, Oh Lord, arise in my life and let every enemy be scattered. I am praying for them right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be manifestations of favor, success, prosperity, breakthroughs, open doors, life in abundance on every side. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, mighty God. And their lives will never, never, never be the same. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Praise God. In Christ, the hope of glory. 
this life and hope for you. Open your heart, receive from Him. Christ is calling you, brother, receive your hope. Christ is calling you, sister, receive.